Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is unique rows in a Boolean matrix and it is an easy level problem. So I don't know what the Geeks for Geeks team is doing. But surprisingly enough, like yesterday's problem was a medium level problem and they expected us to solve it with try. And uh, fortunately for our own sake, we had a solution which was not try which was just brute force and even the complexity was almost same as the expected complexity. Now in today's question, it is an easy level problem and I don't think that there exists any other way to solve this particular problem without try. So this problem can actually be solved with try, although the constraints are very, very small, right? You can use any method, but I'm just talking about solving it in expected time and space complexity, right? So yesterday's, pro yesterday's problems could have been easily solved and with any other way other than try with the expected time complexity as well and today's questions cannot be solved anyway without try if you want to solve it in this particular complexity and uh, today it is an easy level problem so anyways i still believe like uh, there exists a way or two like uh, you can use uh, if you talk about c plus plus we have an unordered map the complexity of insertion on average is over one but uh, on like in a worst case it is n square right so we are not going to trust an uh, unordered map in this particular case however if you use unordered map i think that would have the space same space and time complexity right but if we are not trusting these data structures and we want to write something on our own then try is our only option so let us discuss both methods both the brute force and the try and uh, uh, let me just take this screenshot but it is very surprising like today today we cannot solve without try so it is an easy level problem yesterday we could have easily written a brute force solution so it was a medium level problem. i don't know what who is deciding these problem difficulties but i believe like if really it is meant to be solved with try so this should be at least a medium level problem so let us see what we have here so basically the question is uh, while discussing the question about the while discussing about the question, I forgot to mention the question itself. So the question is something like this. We have been given a mattress, right, of size 3 cross 4, right. So this will be given in our question. Now if we have to tell what are the unique rows in the mattress. So for example, this row is the first row. So it is obviously unique. This is the second row. So it is different from the first row. It is also unique. This is the third row. It is exactly similar to the first row. So it is not unique, right. So we just have to return the first and the second row. We don't have to return the index. We have to return this value. So we will be returning. Let me just write it clearly. We will be returning 1101 and 1001, right? So these dollar signs, we don't have to do anything. Uh, these will be taken care by the program itself, the, by the driver code. We just have to return this part as a double dimensional vector, right? So now one is obviously go through all the rows. And for example, if you are at row, row ith, Right, so you go from every row from 0 to i minus 1, right, and you check whether these two rows are equal. If the current row is equal to any of those rows from 0 to i minus 1, then you will not add the current row to your answer, otherwise, you will add the current row to your answer, right. So, this is one way of doing it. This is very brute force way. So, the total time complexity is, for example, the number of rows is n. So, for each of those rows, what you will have to do, you will have to go through all the previous rows n into m. Right. So I believe like this should be an expected time complexity. This would also pass in any uh, case like this is a uh, n cube solution. So this is going to pass this particular case and also n up to 100. Right. So n up to 100 is completely okay with n cube. Now the thing is, uh, let's say what happens with the other approach with the unordered map. Right. So in this case, Instead of going through all the uh, previous rows again and again, we are just assuming that this particular data structure will hold all the rows for us. And that would be in O of 1 operation, right? Searching and both insertion would be O of 1 operation. We are assuming this. If you don't assume this and however, this is just the average case. This is not the worst case. So let's just assume that uh, average case is O of 1. And uh, we hope that we get all the operations in O of 1 itself. 
So whenever we are at a new row, we will check whether it is present in our map or not. If it is already present in our map, and then we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, we will insert the current row to our answer. So this will work. This will work in n into m, which is the expected time complexity, only when, only when all the uh, operations were performed in O of one, which is not true. It is O of one in on average, but in the worst case, it can also be up to n square. So for small uh, values of n, however, it is it will always be O of one. The n square thing happens when there is lot of collisions in an ordered map, and that usually happens when there are a lot of values. But still, uh, we are going to discuss a method which will work in O of n into n, no matter what happens, right? So let us discuss that approach now. So what we will do is, for example, we had the first number was one one zero one one zero zero one 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 zero one and one zero zero one, and then we again we again have one one zero one. So we are going to store these values in a tray. So since the only two values are zero and one, so creating and storing in a tray is also relatively easy. So for example, this is my start node. What do we do in a tray? We have a start node. We always have a start node, right? Then this particular node has two addresses of two other nodes. So this is zero. Let's say this is zero and this is one. So if from the start node I encounter a zero, I will go to some node. And if from the start node I encounter a one, I will go to some other node, right? This is what we do in a try, right? So for example, if I try to store the first string in my try, I have encountered a one, right? So I move to this place again. I have a node. Again, it can have zero and one. Then I again encounter a one. So let's say I go to this part, right? Now again I have a node, and I have a zero and one. So I again encounter. Now I encounter a zero. So I again Have a node. I have zero and one, and at the end I encounter a one. So I go here. So this is my. This will be my last node for my first string. So from here you cannot go anywhere, right? For the second node, for the second string, what you do? You go to zero. You come here. Now you go to one, right? So now what we can do is, uh, we can write zero and one again. From here I want to again go to zero. So again a new node with zero and one, and at the end. I can write one here, right? Like this. So this is my second string. And for the third string, it is exactly same as the first string. So you will see, you will see that to construct a try, if you have never used try, I hope that this would be very helpful for you. If you have never used try, what we basically do in a try is we try to store them in a graph-like data structure, right? We will start from a single node at which there are no characters. We write all the characters. We have addresses or pointers to all the characters. So since there was only zero and one here, I write zero and one. And if I were, if I have like all the alphabets from A to Z, I will have twenty six positions from A to Z, right? So what I do is I say whenever I uh, whenever I need a zero at the first position, then I will go to this particular node. But since there was no zeros, so I I don't have any node right now. But whenever I need a one, I will go to this particular node, right? So all the strings which have a one at their first place will go here, right? At this particular node. So from here, if any string has a one, it will go to the left. Otherwise, it will go to the right. So this was from zero, right? So this is how we basically construct a try. Now, how does this help us? So you will see, in order to check or in order to insert a new node or a new string, whatever you have to do is you just have to traverse through the string, right? For example, if I want to check the last string whether it is present in my try or not, at the same time I also want to insert it. I can do it in only one operation, right? So if I want to check whether it is possible or not, I'll just try to insert this particular string, right? So I start from the zeroth node, or there is nothing. There is an empty character here, right? So I start from here. I encounter a one. I move to this particular place. Then I encounter a one again. I move to this particular place here, and then I encounter a zero. Then I move to here, and then I encounter a one. I move to here. So you see, while construct trying to construct this particular string, I didn't even create a single node, right? So that means during the insertion of a string, if I create at least one node, if I create at least one node, that means this particular string has never been encountered before. If I create zero number of nodes and if I don't create any node, like in the third example, that means this particular string has been already used before, and hence I should not use it again. 
so what is the time complexity of constructing the try and uh, retrieving the values so as i have told you to insert the nodes you just have to traverse through the string and to check also it is the same operation so the total time complexity will be o of n into m right using a try is very very simple you just need to know what is the concept and if you have done basic data structures like doing operations on a binary search tree or anything like that this would be much 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 easier right so yes you just have to create nodes and you just have to add them as a pointer to the current node right so let me just show you the code so that it is more clear to you so what i done is i created a uh, class try node right so what i basically do here is i am creating a vector which is next so this is going just going to store my next pointers right so whenever my constructor is called i will initialize my next as a vector of size 2 and currently both of them will be having null pointers right so i initialize a root node with new try node right and i create a double dimensional vector or answer of integers right now what i do is i just traverse through all the rows and i initialize my ok variable as zero so basically ok is going to store whether i have created at least one new node or not right now i initialize my new row vector and my try node current starting from root now i just traverse through all the characters in the current uh, row now what i do is i just push back the jth character or the jth number in the new row vector just because at the end i will need this and i can easily push this particular value into my answer vector right this is what i this is why i have it now what i do is if if my current dot next this particular value is not equals to null pointer so for example if i am at the current node and i need a zero now right so i check current dot next of zero right if it is not null pointer that means that there exist already exists a node right so i just set my current node as next node if the pointer does not exist what i'll do is i'll simply create a new pointer with a try node and i mark my current of next of m of ij as new node so earlier it was not existing i was checking that if this exists or not next of m of ij so basically i'm at the current node right I have encountered some uh, characters already. Now I need to find the next character. If the pointer to that particular character already exists and it is not equal to null pointer, I just directly set my current as that particular pointer. Otherwise, I create a new node and update the next of the current pointer as that new node. And then I'll also update my current pointer as the new node. Right. And I mark OK as one. This means that I have I created at least one new node. If this OK is true, that means this particular row is unique and I have not encountered it before. And if OK is true, I just push back the new row into my answer vector. So this would be the whole solution and at the end, I can just return my answer value. So I know that this solution is uh, totally not required. If you just want to solve this problem, although if you want to solve it in expected time and space complexity, this would be the best solution that will yield exactly the same time and space complexity. You can also use hash maps or unordered maps. It will still work. It says that it is a data structure which does not always work in O of 1. Not talking about this question specifically, but in generally. So that is why I try to avoid that particular data structure whenever I want an O of 1 solution. That is why I discuss this particular approach. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular approach works. And uh, you will see that it passes all the test cases here. Right. So it works and I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Any general thing you would like to share or anything about the question you had in your mind. Because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Stay safe. Bye-bye.